Hi there. Welcome back. Last week we discussed the state of the art of terrorism and counterterrorism studies and looked into the difficulties, the challenges when doing research on these phenomena. And we also showed a number of research products. Well, this week we're going to look at five of these products, five interesting assumptions, either because they're challenged or the opposite. They're considered very much true and it's, they constitute the basis of policy making, of counter-terrorism measures. Well, it's good to test them, to compare them with evidence and compare them with literature. Also because terrorism is a complex and ever-changing phenomenon and that requires us to update our theories and assumptions every now and then, especially if they constitute the basis of policy making. The five assumptions that we're going to explore and analyze are the following. Terrorism is caused by poverty and terrorists are crazy or insane. And the third assumption we're going to look at is terrorism is becoming increasingly lethal, it's getting more deadly. And then we look at the assumption that terrorism is predominantly anti-Western and finally we're going to look at whether or not terrorism is successful, as stated by some. The first assumption is about root causes of terrorism. It states that poverty causes terrorism. It is an idea that is almost as old as the first attempts to understand terrorism. Where does it come from, the study of terrorism? But it should be stressed that this statement, this assumption is mostly put forward by politicians and public figures. Well, here are two examples. The first one is from the former US Secretary of State, General Colin Powell, who in 2002 said the following. He said, I fully believe that the root cause of terrorism does come from situations where there is poverty, where there is ignorance, where people see no hope in their lives. And the second um, example of somebody who states that poverty causes terrorism is the South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And in 2007 he said, you can never win a war against terror as long as there, there are conditions in the world that make people desperate. Poverty, diseases, ignorance. Two excellent examples of very well-known um, public figures who have stated that poverty causes terrorism. Are these eminent persons right or wrong? Is poverty a root cause of terrorism? First we are going to answer the question, why is it actually assumed that there is a link between poverty and terrorism? Well, the basic idea is that poverty leads to a lack of opportunities to uh, improve the quality of somebody's life. I think Colin Powell referred to that. And that could result in anger towards people who are better off or into blaming the government for the lack of these opportunities. And grievances is a key word here. In combination with the idea that terrorists are rational actors. It is argued by some that violence might be the last resort to put their grievances, their anger, their frustration on the political agenda. While others point at the fact that there is terrorism in poor countries and that some terrorists are indeed from the lower parts of society. And they subsequently assume a link between the two, a correlation between poverty and terrorism. Well, we're going to look at that later on. And then finally, it should be stressed that there are some terrorist organizations, mainly extreme left-wing organizations, that claim to fight for the poor. Why does it matter? Why do we have to test this assumption? Well, obviously it has consequences for counter-terrorism measures. For instance, if you think that poverty is a root cause of terrorism, you might want to do a lot more about poverty 
um, eradication. And of course that is great for, from a humanitarian perspective, but you want to know if it's really helpful to make the chance of a terrorist attack any smaller. But just like with many other different issues, counterterrorism policymakers are confronted with the problem of allocating scarce resources. Money, time, people. And if you spend it on poverty eradication, you can't spend it on something else. So we want to know if poverty is really a root cause of terrorism or not. And we have to decide whether uh, it is important to eradicate poverty from a counter-terrorism perspective. It's important in many other, uh, from many other perspectives, but is it also helpful in the fight against terrorism? I've shown a number of examples of influential people who um, state that there is a link between poverty and terrorism. And I could have added many more. Well, interestingly, it's mainly politicians that make that claim. Politicians, world leaders even, that are responsible for strategies and policies on important issues such as terrorism. And the idea of a causal link between poverty and terrorism doesn't sound far-fetched. But is it true or is it a myth? Well, let's compare uh, this statement with empirical data and academic research. Let us first have a look at some statistics, some examples. While studying the characteristics of individual terrorists, it seems strange to assume a direct link between poverty and terrorism. Most terrorists are not very poor or much poorer than others. In fact, some terrorists are extremely rich. Think of Osama bin Laden, perhaps the most well-known terrorist of our age, who came from a wealthy Saudi family. And another example is the so-called Christmas Day bomber, uh, Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib, who in 2009 tried to blow up a plane heading for Detroit. Well, he studied in London and was of a well-to-do family from Nigeria. And there are many other examples of terrorists from upper or upper middle class. Take for instance Anders Breivik, who killed almost 80 people in Norway. Or to take an example from the 1960s uh, and 70s uh, from left-wing terrorism, Ulrike Meinhof, one of the key persons of the Rote Armee faction. She also came from a well-to-do family, was highly educated and had lots of opportunities in life. Studying the characteristics of jihadi terrorists in Europe, I found out that they were mainly uh, children of migrants or migrants themselves. And they were of lower parts of society. But they were not poorer than other migrants or children of migrants. And the same holds for many terrorists in the less developed parts of this world. Many of them are perhaps not rich or not even middle class, but they're not poorer than their fellow citizens. And this has been confirmed by quite a number of studies into the backgrounds of terrorists, which we will discuss in a minute. I would like to go back to the map I presented in the first week. The map showing the impact of terrorism based on the Global Terrorism Index of 2016 that was published by the Institute for Economics and Peace. What do we see? If we look at the map, we see that Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Iraq and Nigeria are most often confronted with terrorism. Are these the poorest countries in the world? Well, let's have a look at the statistics of the World Bank on gross domestic product per capita. And they have a list of 183 states. Now we see that Iraq is number 77 on that list and it's considered a higher middle, middle income country. And Pakistan, India and Nigeria rank between 121 and 131 and they're considered lower income countries. Well, the only country that is in the bottom part of this list is Afghanistan, but there are about 20 other countries that are less developed. And the 10 countries with the lowest per capita um, gross domestic product do not experience high or even moderate levels of terrorism, with the exception of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And you also see that Somalia 
is also often faced with terrorism, but the World Bank didn't have data on uh, that country. Well, was this situation perhaps different in the past? Let's take the example of left-wing terrorism uh, in the 1960s and 1970s. It were countries like Germany, Italy and Japan that were most often hit by this type of terrorism. Well, these countries, both then and today, are among the richest in the world. So looking both at the individuals and at countries, there seems to be little support for the idea that poverty causes terrorism. But the assumption deserves a more in-depth look. I would like to present to you the detailed study by James Piazza who looked at the link between poverty and terrorism from different angles on a macro level. Well, in his study, um, he included many variables that could directly or indirectly be related to poverty or associated with poverty. And these uh, factors or variables included low levels per capita income, um, high levels of illiteracy, low life expectancy and lack of employment opportunities. Well, he looked closely at them and he concluded that these poverty-related factors could not be linked to higher levels of terrorism. Two scholars that did not use indicators of poverty on a macro level but looked at individual cases, individual lives, were Alan Kruger and Yitka Malechkova. And in their very often st uh, quoted study from 2003, um, they investigated the assumed link between poverty, education and terrorism. And their research fo focused specifically on the militant wing of Hezbollah, the Shia um, Islamist group and political party in Lebanon. Well, they looked at these cases, they looked at the lives of these persons, the history of these persons, their biographies. And they found out um, that, and I quote here, any connection between poverty, education and terrorism is indirect, complicated and probably quite weak. And they also concluded that terrorism is rather, and it uh, shows you here, is caused by a response to political conditions and long-standing feelings of indignity and frustration that have very little to do with economics. We'll have a look at the reading list if you want to read the whole article of Kruger and Malechkova and the same holds for the other articles and reports I've mentioned. So true or false, myth or fact? While well, studying the statistics and looking at the academic literature, there is very little support for the idea of a direct link between poverty and terrorism. And some argue there might be an indirect link but it's very difficult to prove. And yes, of course, there might be individual cases where people are motivated to turn to terrorism because of poverty. But there's no evidence to support the idea that poverty is a root cause of terrorism. So what have we learned? The idea of a causal relationship between poverty and terrorism is mainly put forward by politicians and public figures. But statistical uh, data on individual terrorists and countries do not show a link between poverty and terrorism. And scholarly literature is quite clear about the lack of such a link. Therefore, this assumption we have to label a myth. In the next video, we're going to explore the second assumption, the assumption that terrorists are crazy.